Hello friends, once again welcome back to Amar Edu videos. Today I am going to start a series of videos to make you understand various important regulatory documents. Regulatory writing is a part of clinical research that deals with the documents that are meant for submission to the regulatory authorities like FDA, EMEA, Health Canada etc etc. So these are the documents that are required for the approval process of drugs, devices as well as biologics by regulatory authorities. The entire process of writing a regulatory document drives the demand for a well written clear and concise document and also the type of document that is compliant to various standards and so that a reviewer can easily read it and can understand. Well, before going to the types of regulatory documents, let me tell you why these regulatory documents are required. Regulatory documents are submitted to track and evaluate the ethical and procedural conduct of a clinical trial as well as the quality of data that is produced during clinical trial. Regulatory documents also ensure that the investigator, sponsor, institutional review board members as well as independent ethics committee members are in compliance with the standards of GCP guidelines. Regulatory documents also demonstrate the compliance with all applicable regulatory requirements since the inception of early preclinical phases to the late developmental phases of drug products. Well, here are some important types of regulatory documents which needs to be submitted to the regulatory authorities for product approval that include IND, clinical study protocol, ICF also called as informed consent forms, case report forms, CSRs, clinical study reports, safety narratives which are part of CSR, IB that is investigators brochure, formulary dossiers, PSUS or PEBRAS, DSUS that is development safety update reports, CTDs also called as common technical documents, RMPs also called as risk management plan, RAP also called as risk assessment plan as well as SMPC summary of product characteristics. In this part 1 video I am going to discuss about investigational new drug application, clinical study protocol as well as informed consent form. I will cover the remaining topics in part 2 as well as part 3 videos. With this part 1, part 2 and part 3 videos you will be having a decent amount of understanding about various regulatory documents. And then I will post videos discussing each subtopic in detail. Coming to the first topic IND. It is an abbreviation for Investigational New Drug Application. Generally, new drugs are tested on animals before people. Additionally, in some cases, multiple species are used to gather information on safety of compound being investigated. Then, the drug sponsor submits IND to the FDA based on the results of initial testings on animals. The application is required to include drug composition as well as details of manufacturing. The IND usually presents a plan of testing of drugs on human subjects. The FDA reviews the plan to determine if the proposed clinical trial will put human subjects at reasonable and significant risk of sickness or injury. In simple words, an IND is a request we made to FDA to administer an investigational drug to human subjects. Coming to the second topic, clinical study protocol. A protocol is a written plan for a trial and it explains what would be done during the trial. It is a document that describes the study procedure and how to present and analyze the endpoint of a study. The main components of protocol are objectives of the study, its design, the methodology they are going to follow, the statistical analysis they are going to perform and the organization of a trial. Prior to study initiation, protocol document needs to be approved by the regulatory authorities. A protocol must be compliant with ICH E6 GCP requirements. A protocol must also ensure the safety of the trial subjects and integrity of the data collected that is appropriately included in the protocol. Coming to the third topic ICF also called as informed consent forms. If a scientist want to study about any investigational drug in human subjects, he need to ask for their permission. In research study, 
This is called informed consent. So, ICFs are documents that are signed by study participants before entering into the clinical trials. Researchers are required to get informed consent from people who participate in research. Getting this permission is important because it ensures that the participant in research knows some key things like they need to know what the research is about, they need to know what is going to be their role in research, they need to know how to contact researchers if they need to do and most importantly they need to know what the risk and benefits of being a subject is posing to. An ICF should be obtained for all types of clinical studies including diagnostic, therapeutic, interventional, social and behavioral studies and also irrespective of whether they are conducted nationally or internationally. In simple words, the main goal of ICF is to provide sufficient information to a participant to make a decision whether or not to enroll into a study or to continue participation. An ICF must be easily understandable by the subjects. The participants should have proper understanding about the objective of the study to make legible decision before signing the ICF. And that's the end of part 1 video and thank you all very much for watching this.